I just saw Grace perform the other night. It was so fucking awesome. I was like, hey, come perform with us. And she's like, yeah, no problem. And Grace is going to share some art with us. So we're going to let Grace get set up and uh, enjoy this fabulosity. Yeah. 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 As I was walking in uh, this evening, uh, I saw my friend Anurita, who was sitting at the bar. She came basically to see Dark Matter as yeah. many other performers here. Yeah. Yeah. So then I recruited her because I needed someone to do to read for me. So she he did not practice this at all. No. And it's um, a very sexy book. So it's it's a very right. oh, it's too much. Okay. Um, so I chose this reading from this book because I think and I feel like the the poetry we just heard from Timothy really kind of expresses that being able to forgive people that you don't think you can forgive, and I think queerness can be applied to our search for the divine, and our embrace of God, and there are great saints in history who took some really weird paths and found themselves in these very mystical places, and I think it's a very queer perspective, and so this reading is coming from that, so. Teresa Avila, 1515 to 1582 is undoubtedly the most influential female state in the Western world, and she has made a great contribution to spiritual literature and poetry. She was a woman of tremendous courage who was rightfully credited with the remarkable political and religious reform achieved against the strongest and most insidious chauvinistic forces. <laughs> a realistic picture of Teresa's life did not even reach the English reading general public until the 1960s. She was known to have had a remarkable quick wit and stunning, even provocative sense of humor, as well as a great physical beauty. Her complete works include seven books, 450 letters, and assorted poetry. Her writings are considered masterpieces of mystical prose and verse. She has personally founded 17 Carmelite comments and two monasteries, despite enormous opposition from the church and other men in power. <laughs> Teresa was born in a villa, a beautiful high mountain village, village of the Surrier de Gritos. She was one of 13 children three girls and ten boys in a wealthy family. The Spain in which Teresa grew up was permeated with several hundred years of Arabian culture. The eradication of Arab power was followed by, Spain's, by one of Spain's darkest periods, the insanity of the Inquisition, which in the 14th century, along with other grievous deeds, forced mass conversions of Jews to Christianity. Conversos, as they were called, was a continual persecuted minority with special taxes, exclusion from the church or military professions, and even service in the New World. At this time, most young males sought to make their fortune in the New World, as did nine of Teresa's ten brothers. Teresa's grandfather, a wealthy wool and silk merchant, had actually reclaimed his Jewish ancestry, partly for business reasons. The aristocracy protected and even intermarried with the Jews. Although the family had been conversed converted for over a hundred years. However, before the end of the 14th century, the anti-Semitic atmosphere in Toledo, where the family then lived, became so extreme that Teresa's father, Al Alonso Sanchez, moved the family to a villa and aspired to live the life of the Hadigo class, giving up the father's cloth trade and living off his, off his savings. Teresa ran, away from, Teresa ran away from home to join a convent. <laughs> At that time, many convents were more like hotels for women, allowing them a great deal of independence than they would be allowed at home. Though after two years at the convent, Teresa had a near-death experience that changed her life. A spiritual awakening that began in which she cultivated a system of meditation that sought, that sought the mind to such an extent that God could, could then be heard speaking. Over the next 20 years, she experienced many mystical states, but not until she was 50 did she begin the most far-reaching aspects of her life's work. Teresa had a great deal of desire, and when the Inquisition in 1559 forbade women to read, Ter Teresa turned to God and asked him to teach her soul about divine love. She then began to write completely out of her own experience. Many of her poems are, in fact, intimate accounts of her communication with God. The church's persecution of Teresa had not wanted, had, had not wanted when she passed away and was buried in Alba de Torms in 1582. A year after her death, some of her disciples, feeling that she might have wished to be buried alive in Avila, had her body exhumed. When her body was found to be perfectly intact and emitting a wonderful fragrance, her statehood was form formally decreed, allowing, allowing the publication and pr preservation of some of her works. Most of what we see today of Teresa's work is prob probably renowned way back for her 
writings fell into the hands of under the control of very forces that had so opposed her throughout her life. With this in mind, the versions that follow attempt to portray a hopefully more genuine account of her astounding relationship with God. Alright, this is a poem called Clarity is Freedom. I had tea yesterday with a great theologian, and he asked me, what is your experience of God's will? I like that question, for the distillation of thought, poems, thought, and others. Clarity, I know, is freedom. What is my experience of God's will? Everyone is a traveler. Most all need lodging, food, and clothes. I let my mouth, what will I let enter my mouth what will enrich me. I wear what will make my eye content. I sleep where I will, weak with the strength to deeply love. All my mind can hold. What is God's will for a wing? Every bird knows that. This next one is called the Servant of Unity. Most men in power have not the strength or wisdom to be satisfied with the way things are. The same no contentment for beauty is their lover, and beauty is never absent from this world. The farther away light is from one's touch, the more one naturally speaks of the need for change. Yes, overthrow any government inside that makes you weep. The child blames the external forces whose energy is there. The, war the warrior conquers the realms within and becomes gifted. Only the inspired should make decisions that affect the lives of many. Never a man who has not held God in his arms and become a servant of unity. This one is called on the holy thoughts. A woman's body, like the earth, has seasons. When the mountain stream, when the holy thaws. When I am most fragile and in need, it was then, it seems, God came closest. God, like a medic on a field, is tending to our souls. Our hearts get locked with desires, but don't hold yourself too accountable, for all desires are really innocent. That is what the compassion in his eyes tell me. Why this great war between the countries, the countries inside of us? What are all these insane borders we protect? What are all these different names for the same church of love we kneel in together? For it is true, together we live, and only at the shrine where we are all welcome will God sing loud enough to be heard. Our hearts got locked with the earth and the sky in some odd marriage ritual. So what? Don't worry. We should be proud of ourselves for everything that we helped create in this magic world. And God is always there if you feel wounded. His need, he, he kneels over the earth like a divine medic, and his love thaws the holy in us. This is the last one. It's called the Sky Sheet. When he touches me, I clutch the Sky Sheet the way other lovers do. The earth's weave of clay. Any real ecstasy is a sign you are moving in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let any prude tell you otherwise. <laughs>